Hello there, Tim friends, and welcome back to Tim in Japan. In this episode, we take a relaxed, laid back tour through Japan's former capital city, Kyoto. So kick back and enjoy the travel montage. Today, we'll be exploring the traditional district known as Higashiyama, as well as checking in to the luxuriously elegant Park Hyatt Kyoto. So, join me on this beautiful day as we continue exploring all Japan has to offer, Tim style. Our first stop is an early lunch at the Kyoto Bistro, one of the featured restaurants of the Park Hyatt. Top to bottom, this place exudes class. Our reservation got us in a little early, so as the first ones in, we received a beautiful table with a stunning view. It's a special experience, dining alongside floor to ceiling views of Kyoto's times long past. And lunch has arrived. Fried fish with wonderfully crispy chips and a yuzu kosho aioli, as well as Parmesan truffle fries and the wagyu beef curry. Even though the Kyoto Bistro is geared towards tourists on a busy street, every dish was honestly excellent and well thought out. A finely crafted blend of both Western and Japanese palates. A little on the pricey side, but an easy recommend, especially for those looking for a taste closer to home. We were a little early for check in, so we dropped off our bags and headed out for some window shopping. First stop, the Ghibli store, conveniently located just across the street. streets and shops all along Higashiyama is a real treat. There is a concerted effort to maintain the historical architecture and atmosphere, crafting a wistful, nostalgic mood that brings you right back to the days of yore. common theme among many of the shops we visited, beautiful handcrafted ceramics and dishware. Plenty of people rent out traditional kimono and wander the streets, really adding to that old Kyoto ambiance. And of course, what tourist attraction would be complete without fun little souvenir shops like this? could not pass up getting these massive mitarashi dango. And yes, they were just as good as they look. And check out this Starbucks. They've maintained the original design of the shop, which is pretty neat. 
The downstairs is very tiny, but there are upstairs rooms available to sit and enjoy your coffee. Pretty cool cup design too. appreciated how there were so many locally owned shops dedicated to selling thoughtfully handmade crafts. There were many shops selling fantastic ceramics. Unfortunately, they're also very challenging to bring home in one piece. Kashiyama is beautiful and chock full of shops, snacks, and sweets. You could easily spend half a day just walking around, casually strolling, and perusing all it has to offer. And of course, I could not resist stopping in for an Uji matcha latte. I mean, it's Kyoto, right? How could I not? We decided on this place, Kyo Sampo, as it wasn't so packed with tourists. Ah, just what I needed. And boy, did it hit the spot. Serendipitously, this was my first time stumbling upon Porter. Little did I know it would begin a lifelong obsession. But more on that in a future episode. And making our way back, it was finally time to check in. Park Hyatt Kyoto is an indisputably magnificent property. They've meticulously designed the grounds to seamlessly blend traditional style Kyoto architecture with modern luxuries. The result is nothing short of spectacular. Upon check-in, the hotel manager himself gave us a tour of the grounds and personally led us to our room. This place is jaw-droppingly gorgeous. And now, time for the room tour. Incredibly spacious, decked out in luxurious touches and amenities, one of only two rooms on the property with access to this private garden. So on the third floor, we have a spa area. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's a gym and also a small Japanese bus house okay. Ah, okay. with a sauna. 
It's abundantly clear that this room was designed with elegance, first and foremost. Every inch of the place exudes class, even the free toiletries. us was a lovely welcome note accompanied by fresh strawberries. With a secret handle, the back door opens up, giving access to the garden. And the price? About 300,000 yen a night, or roughly 2,000 US dollars. So how could we afford this place? Well, let me tell you a little story. I actually booked a standard room well in advance for free, courtesy of credit card points. They emailed me a few Maybe. months later, having accidentally overbooked, and offered me an upgrade for simply the cost of fees. So yeah, we got this room for roughly 60 bucks. Deal of the century? For me it certainly was. Let's venture out and discover more of the Park Hyatt's secrets. I headed on down to their wellness center, a decently appointed gym en route to the bathhouse. Luxury amenities and private lockers. Amazingly, I had the entire place to myself. A couple showers with a jacuzzi hot tub and a cold bath, plus a sauna and steam room. Ah, luxury. I could get used to this. Now let's head on up to the rooftop terrace. Just rounding the corner, what awaits is an unquestionably dazzling view of the old Kyoto horizon. This little viewing area is actually nestled right in between their two high-end dining options, teppanyaki and kaiseki. A bit outside of our price range, but luckily the viewing terrace is open to all hotel guests. Ever really get enough of that view? was time to head out for our dinner reservations. private booth with some of the highest quality beef around. That's right, yakiniku time. Alright, this is it. Matsusaka beef, and the very beautifully grilled, just salt. Mm. 
Mm. Hands down, best bite of beef in my entire life. This place was utterly magnificent. Unbeatable quality, affordable prices, and the perfect atmosphere. I honestly could not recommend it enough. Even got my chance to try out beef tartare for the first time ever. Tartar, first time. Hmm. Honestly, the quality is so good. It's like it doesn't even taste like it's raw. Mm -hmm. Wow. Per person, 6,000 yeah. yen. So per person, like 50 bucks. Yeah. For like literally the best quality yeah. beef you could get, basically. Yeah. I mean, it's probably out. not you could get, but you know. Yeah. My yeah. Oh god, that was amazing. I will never forget that. Go here. Now for an after dinner stroll through downtown Kyoto. Obviously, the night would not be complete without dropping in the local 7-Eleven for some dessert. Arriving back at the Park Hyatt, the setting of the sun has transformed the once bustling streets of Higashiyama now replaced by a dreamy, romantic atmosphere. back up to the rooftop terrace to enjoy our desserts and take in that view. And what a view it was. Unknown to us, while we were out, the staff had prepared a celebratory dessert. What a thoughtful touch. And one final thing, I could not resist taking advantage of the free-to-order amenities. A hairbrush, a lint roller, some plush eye masks, a quality nail clipper and facial kit. And I still use this wooden comb to this day. And that will 
about wrap things up for day one in Kyoto. I will end things with my parting thoughts alongside some of my favorite shots for the day. What a magnificent time in an alluring city. I loved the aesthetic amalgam of tradition and modernity, presented in a thoughtful and elegant way. The entire day was a real treat and an amazing way to spend our anniversary. My only regret is that we didn't get to stay longer. There's something magical about this traditional district of Kyoto, and being able to stay in such a luxurious property with all the amenities and elegant touches, it made the whole experience almost dreamlike. When you come to Kyoto, be sure to check out the Higashiyama district, you won't regret it. That being said, be sure to stay tuned for part 2 of the Kyoto vlogs, where we head on further down the street to Kiyomizu Dera Temple for some incredible views and amazing architecture. You won't want to miss it. I'm Tim, and these are my thoughts. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to check out the rest of Tim in Japan on my channel. Also be sure to follow along on my Instagram and drop by the Discord. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.